Hello everyone and welcome to a very special conversation. It's a political drama and an action thriller which weaves together multiple events in Kashmir from 2016 to 2019 when Article 370 was abrogated. And like the real life event itself, it has polarizing views. There are many who say that the film is a success and the box office numbers are showing that. The other side is of the opinion that the film lacks nuances. Kashmir is a lost case, ma'am. Jab tak ye special status hai, hum unhe haath bhi nahi laga sakte. Aur wo log hume Article 370 ko haath lagane nahi denge. Ye baazi, khun ki baazi hai. Har ghar se niklega burhan. Tum kitne burhan maaroge? We have the film's leading star, Zoni Haksar which has been played by Yami Gautam joining us live. We have a producer of the film, Aditya Dhar, and Aditya Zamble, who is uh, the director. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, Yami, it becomes the first female-led blockbuster uh, of 2024. Uh, women have been ruling the box office uh, since 2022 in many ways. Uh, Gangu Bai, uh, Kerala Story, Mrs. Chatterjee versus Norway and Tejas. So congratulations to you. Thank you. Thank you, Maya. Thank you so much. Uh, several firsts in this film and uh, what fascinates me the most and particularly as a political journalist who covered those events, uh, reporting from outside the Prime Minister's residence when uh, the article was uh, being abrogated in the sense not just before it was approved by the cabinet. Uh, the leading women, which is you, is an intelligence okay, officer ma'am. and the Home Secretary is also a woman. What was the thought behind it? I'm going to ask you that and then I'll bring in the director and the producer. Um, actually, it should go to the producer first because they are the ones who decided the casting. For, for me, for Zuni, my character is based on someone who's out there in real life. So I was, rep I was representing someone. Uh, who is a, um, a, a female intelligence officer. And I'm so glad that uh, they did not change the casting or the gender just to, just, you know, to make more money or knowing that, okay, getting a male actor or a, or a bigger name is, is of course, short, short, you know, guarantees you a certain number at the box office. They wanted to keep it as authentic as possible. And uh, as well as Priya's role is centered again, uh, this was the same thought. Um, sometimes a character can be an amalgamation of two, three different uh, characters and in, in, uh, people in real life embodied into one. And uh, so they felt nothing better than, um, you know, two, uh, if, uh, at the risk of sounding immodest, but two good actors who can <laughs> who know their job damn well and can, can do justice to a story, something which is of, of so much importance and relevance and, uh, and uh, to the film. Yes, so it is relevant and uh, again because there are two women uh, characters who are the central uh, you know, pillars of this film, uh, that's perhaps uh, why several women journalists are interested in this story and uh, over the last few days you have been interviewed by a number of women journalists as well, Yami. Um, Aditya, would you Absolutely. take that question, uh, why women as central figures? Which Aditya? <laughs> Either of you. <laughs> Okay, so like she said, uh, uh, it's based on uh, 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 real life uh, people and it's inspired from them. And uh, when we were researching on this subject, we realized that it's one of the most extraordinary stories of how uh, it was planned and how it was executed and how so many people were involved, but from, let's say, intelligence agencies to bureaucracy to defense personnel. And it didn't, uh, it never got leaked from even a single point. That's right. So the story itself was pretty, pretty incredible. Um, and then uh, because it was based, inspired from real life people, we realized that it will be an absolute disservice uh, to our craft if we, ch we have to change the gender just to make extra money. Uh, we wanted to stick to reality. And uh, I think that that a challenge has actually paid off in a much better way because uh, audience nowadays is so intelligent that they understand the authenticity and they understand the um, the jazba behind making a great film. So I I, I really really feel that uh, 
it's something which uh, we stuck to in terms of our guts and, and it has really, really paid off. Yes, uh, so the other Aditya, yes, it was a huge surprise. And uh, 2016 was when uh, the government went for it. Nobody thought that why would, you, why would they uh, go in for this kind of a big move uh, immediately after in, uh, 2019, in fact, 19. that when they were voted to power. Many, there is one thing that uh, did come as a surprise to many was the level of involvement that the prime minister's office had. You all have incorporated it and, and uh, several people who are privy to the events are of the opinion that's perhaps the, uh, the, the, the fact is as close as that. Yeah, I mean, uh, it is. it was a historical decision which was taken on 5th of August 2019. And I think one of the biggest ones in the history of India. And um, I think so. When we when we wanted to make a film on it, uh, it had to be authentic. We had uh, uh, we had uh, con uh, we had contacted certain investigative journalists who had come to Aditya also and uh, kind of briefed certain aspects of it, which was not known to the public domain. And once we saw everything and the entire material on it, we were very sure of one approach that we try and uh, take it as close to the reality as possible, so that you the whole idea is the audience needs to be in the situation they need to see it in real uh, as opposed to you know trying to fictionalize it so much that people feel it is filmy and i think that was the only intent which we entirely were on on the same page and everybody the entire cast and crew had the same idea and that's i think was the whole approach in which we did the film there's also a view that uh, you know cinematic liberties are taken from the start but uh, the the historical facts have been also not presented in the right way what will you tell those who are criticizing your film on those lines? I think uh, I think it's the I think the film has the perfect balance. I think as a director of this film, I would say because it's a huge chunk of uh, time domain that we had to cover. Uh, because it it's not like uh, it's a story of uh, like two months. You know, it's a story which is it, the span of the film and the span of the uh, the story is completely diversified into like probably four or five years ka struggle into a uh, two hours of experience. And when we are trying to make cinema, yes, of course, we have to kind of uh, weave it into a story, a narrative, which doesn't make it look like a documentary. And mm. uh, it is a thin line which we always are careful not to cross when we are talking about uh, cinematic liberty and uh, these things, because it's also a responsibility. And I am proud of the fact that we went ahead uh, as close as possible. Whatever was possible to incorporate in whichever way in a realistic manner, I think we have done and Yami, the praise coming from the awesome. Prime Minister, awesome. in fact, uh, several BJP ruled states have, uh, have also Boss declared it, the have, uh, have watched it in, in uh, you know, the cabinets have watched it together. Uh, what, you know, the response that is coming in from the political class in particular, uh, what does it do to you? Because, you know, you have made certain choices in your entire career which stand out. It's not the usual cinematic journey of many. Uh, Yami Gotham stands out because of her ventures. Um, thank you, Maria. I think the last two lines especially kind of sums up uh, the answer for me because I I think right from my first film, I, I set the tone for myself uh, that this is the path that I want to follow. Uh, mainstream cinema, but done in a, in, in a very substantial way. If we can merge both the things together, uh, why not? So, especially in the recent uh, past couple of years, I think my, my, the kind of choices I've made in my work, uh, the kind of stories I've picked up, the kind of roles I've picked up, and the way I, um, I choose my scripts, I think that, that pretty much stands um, uh, a witness to what I'm saying right now. Hmm. And Article 370, I feel, of course, it's, 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 uh, it, it's very hard to differentiate between your films, but yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's by far the biggest. And I think the most important and the most challenging um, role, which I'm not just saying for, for the heck of it, but this is when I'm reading that feedback from the audience and everybody alike. For me, everybody is, of course, there, there's some people who are really senior, there's some people whose, whose, whose words, you know, they matter more to you. For me, it, it's, it'll always be a cumulative voice. And my respect to each and everybody out there, be it in the political circle, be it, Anybody, anybody, even even a teenager who's writing and, and, and 
uh, recording their messages that this is a film which really touched us and talking about the performances, everybody. So I think uh, it, it's always a collective voice and that only encourages you to take those chances, to take those bold decisions and be courageous and walk the path which is, uh, uh, you know, the less used path. And it's always, we take it up as a challenge when someone especially, um, uh, you know, they tend to tell you that, you know, this are you sure this won't work out? This is not something which you feel the audience will connect with because it's too technical. There's so many things. So once I'm convinced about something and then there is any other voice around it, I take it as a challenge. And um, my, my partner in life <laughs> and my, my film, we, we come from the same thought. So really happy, really ecstatic and really thankful to everybody out there for making the film, uh, our film theirs. Yes, and since this is your first venture as as a couple as well, uh, you know, in, in the world of cinema, I want to understand from you, uh, where did the idea come from uh, first? And because it's based on real life events, but it's a fiction, uh, how much of research went into it and what was the preparations like? So, uh, uh, being a Kashmiri, uh, abrogation of Article 370 was something which was very personal. Um, I have seen the effects of that uh, uh, for so many years of how so many people, be it like separatist politicians, how they were using it to their advantage. And uh, it was it was absolutely personal. So when it happened, it was like overwhelming. It was overwhelming for everyone in India, overwhelming for our community. Uh, but I didn't know much about uh, how it had happened. Everybody knew it happened, but... Uh, how it happened that was something which was absolutely like it was not there and uh, i remember a year year and a half back i happened to meet one of my journalist friends and and he narrated a uh, few of the incidents uh, jamle was present with me at that time and uh, and we immediately thought that yeah, these things are really really extraordinary like how they pulled off and i always say that when it comes to these bureaucrats and all these people who are involved in such operations Absolutely, 100% secrecy, unbelievable <laughs> operation carried out. Absolutely, so uh, it, it automatically lended itself to a great cinema, like we, we immediately thought that this has to come out and it has to be made into a great story and whatever research we started doing and it took us a long time to do research because it's like Jamle said, it's almost like investigative journalism. Like you have to get into each and every detail. And uh, in few months, we realized that oh, we have enough material. In fact, we have more than enough material to write a screenplay on. In fact, we had to cut a lot of a um, lot of details. Uh, might be because of the security reasons and all that. But uh, once the screenplay was ready and we you know, shared it with our team. Uh, uh, everybody was like so enthusiastic. The entire team was like so charged with the story that they said, "Yeah, let's." What was Yami's reaction and... when you spoke about this interaction with the journalist, where your director was present but the lead actor wasn't? So, Yami, what was your reaction when your husband <laughs> shared that with you? Um, you know, we follow a very professional protocol when it comes to work. So, the script didn't come to me over the dining table. The script reached me via my agency and my, my agent. And of course, I was aware of the conversations that were going on. And um, But uh, I was approached in a very professional manner. And I took it up in a very professional way. And I follow the same protocol which I do for my each and every film of mine. Read the script. I don't take narrations. I always read scripts. And I thought when I read it, uh, you know, the, 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 one of the comments, one, sometimes you come across a comment or, or a feedback that, you know, did it really happen? Is it really possible? And I understand that because even I, anybody, any layman would feel that, um, uh, you know, as Aditya said, where our thoughts are ending, our thoughts are ending. Soch. Because it's so phenomenal. Hmm. Just to imagine that so much of planning and so many intricate things and, and it's, it, it's, it's, I was, I was really amazed. I said, this is a story which must come alive. On, on cinema and I would love to play this part. I know it will take everything from me and I'm ready to give it my everything. This role deserves it. Um, but why an people... intelligence officer? You could have been a politician in parliament. 
uh, well, can you fire guns? <laughs> you can't, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because because it was um, because it was inspired from a real life lady yeah, uh, yes. investigative officer. So that's why um, to show we, the sync between the, what's, happening what's happening on Delhi. ground and what's happening yeah. in Delhi, uh, what was happening at that time in South Block, and what was happening at that time in Kashmir. So uh, that's why Priya Mani and uh, like imagine two ladies taking all uh, taking the charge and making it happen. It was. It, on paper itself it was really exciting so yes. we thought but in yeah. real life it was two men um, in fact one uh, look alike men that you have created prime minister of india mr narendra modi <laughs> and home minister amit shah uh, who is full of one liners in the film and rightly so because his speech both in the lok sabha and the rajya sabha at that time was was seen as one of the most uh, you know history driven speech and he made the most uh, compelling argument as to why abrogation was the need of the hour and many say aditya that only a leader of his stature and who has a 360 degree view of uh, of of the ground could have taken that decision which required a lot of guts and only a strong government like that of prime minister modi can take such a call so how difficult is it to ensure that your uh, political figures were as close as the real ones but still they had to be fictional I think it is it is very tricky because it comes up with a lot of responsibility. Uh, we are portraying uh, these characters with so much of gravitas that we cannot go wrong somewhere. Uh, we have to be very specific. Uh, that thin line shouldn't be crossed uh, in the name of cinematic liberty or anything like that. Uh, but I think uh, that was always there while shooting it. You know, every scene uh, it was always back of the mind. I knew it. Uh, I was trying to be cautious and at the same time enjoy that process as well. So I think that somehow is translated into what we see today. Aditya Dhar, how is this different from Uri? It's absolutely different. It's a it's a different story, uh, different characters. Uh, it's more of a political thriller, and I I I really feel that we have never made uh, great political thr- thrillers in India. I, I I feel when I think about it, I think this is one of the only political thrillers which have come out in recent times. so um it's it's very different from uri uh, uri was out and out action film with strategy involved in it this is somewhere where we are of course there is strategy involved in this but it's a different type of strategy so um uh, so i i feel that it's like uh, comparing chalk and cheese like it's absolutely different from each other okay since uh, you know the the central character here is a kashmiri pandit what kind of emotional connect did you manage to have with her riyami actually uh, i would like to correct one thing yes. in never never in the film we mention if she is kashmiri pandit or a kashmiri muslim suni haksar can be a kashmiri muslim name also it can be a kashmiri pandit name also that's, that's, the, that's beauty the beauty of, of kashmiri, kashmiri names perhaps so she is a kashmiri Absolutely. let's say that yes yes yeah. yes uh suni the only yeah i can uh, the only thing i can say means moonlight beautiful name i am not my character and um see if i if i go back briefly to uh, my salad days of my education we weren't really aware much aware about the the, uh, the history of kashmir in terms of um, the exodus and what and all everything that happened post that it was very briefly summed up i think some chapters and and that's about it um i think my um uh, in person conversation um, conversation or my person introduction to actually what had happened uh, verbatim happened uh, after meeting um, aditya and uh, it's not that we met and you know that's that's what we that's uh, what he spoke to me about and we you know in one day you can sum up you cannot it's just that slowly i met his family you know someone would some relatives would come and they're all doing really well their education uh, their education doctors and lawyers and judges and everyone but whenever we we would have some you know those deep conversation and suddenly when this would spring up i would see see that change in expression and completely them being literally transported into a different uh, world it's almost like a scene from a film where you know you go to someone's back story and i which i didn't want them to complete i used to i i used to say that i think this is it i think i don't think i can hear more so after that i think i i got especially after that i got really curious and i, I you know we would talk sometimes and I, i like i want to hear more i want to learn more i want to understand more 
so uh, when i was connecting it to my character now when i uh, when i read the script in my head there was always a back story we may have not shown the complete story of us on on screen that's not possible but in my head as an actor that story was always running in real even uh, minutes or seconds before any scene even if i'm doing an action scene but that emotional story was always on in my in the back of my mind about uh, her growing up years or how it whatever happened in the valley of violence everything how it affected her her family and how it shaped her into how the kind of person that she became so um it, it, it's painful it's it's sad but there's there's uh, there's always hope there always uh, if, if you want to construct a better future there are always ways to um let let the past be let the bygones be bygones i which i say it out of respect i can't say what is done those wounds can be healed but yes uh, time i think is the biggest healer and uh, with the right decisions and with the right um frame of mind and intention we can um we can move ahead and with one of those things was i think make, being a part of this film in article 370 so and would you like uh, to do more of such roles and uh, uh, you know i'd ask that question and i'm going to go back to it because i could see uh, aditya dhar pretty emotional about it because uh, he he has uh, lived through many of those emotions while perhaps making the film and also uh, in life as well uh, do you think that those nuances have been brought out by you because you also have a journalist in the film uh, you know who's constantly asking questions to the government's decision and rightly so that's our job uh, but you know that's also how things were at that time we were questioning but we were also mindful aditya that uh, that was the need of the hour how Ch- kashmir has transformed since the abrogation is for everyone to see it's a beautiful absolutely. state right now absolutely union territory the at the fa- moment yes the the fact that um, uh, we got to shoot uh, in downtown kashmir uh, zena kadal and fate kadal at one point few years back uh, even the authorities were not allowed to go inside and they those are the areas where we were shooting with almost a 250 plus crew and with the uh, amazing support given to us by local people by jnk police by crpf by by authorities and we are really really grateful and one of the reasons why um, because it it's so personal it is so um, uh, close to my heart that was actually one of the reasons why i didn't direct it uh, mm. it was uh, uh, the choice was jamle because we knew knew that he will be able to do give a balanced perspective much better than what i would have given so it was a conscious decision taken by everybody in our company that um, for this project specifically aditya jamle is the best person uh, extremely talented and he has for a debutant filmmaker uh, he has done something which is absolutely extraordinary uh, yami your uh, tweet has lot of people curious it's too technical too many political jargons etc etc but we went ahead with our gut because we knew those naysayers what underestimating our audience uh who were these people who said that the film won't work now please the title of the tweet do not go in, let it not go inside with the same to you i hope there's always an opinion or opinions <laughs> um sorry you said who are the next messages yes yeah. yeah uh no i think uh, i i i i would never disclose anyone's identity i mean i don't think that's important anything in life that i uh, i don't do or i don't end up being a part of or i don't believe in the don'ts i never highlight in life that's 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 very personal and personal not in my head and my heart but just i don't think that's required um uh, but but that's what i'm saying it feels good it feels good it's not the first time that i've been challenged in life or we've been challenged and this is something which i'm sure nobody is immune it, it, to it it's, it actually happened during uri also when we were making uri Uh, war films were not working in india and a lot of people came up to us and said that uh, you are making a war film with a lanky really thin skinny boy vicky koshal how is he going to pull off you spending so much money so a lot of people actually went to my producer ronny saying that and it's a great challenge we really enjoy that we really really enjoy because we don't come from that background where there are preconceived notions about mm. films we are 
absolute outsiders who are like let's try something absolutely new which is not done before and you can see that in our genres the kind of films we are doing mm. uh, nobody was doing war film be- before uri uri released and everybody like there were so many war films coming in uh, with this everybody thought that it's too technical there is like too many political complicated political jargons and everything uh, did you constitu- meet politicians cons- as part of your research no not even one okay you said not you kept politicians one. out of this political thriller absolutely <laughs> absolutely uh, because it, the information was enough uh, we really didn't want to uh, like jamle said that uh, their icons they are very big but the whole point is that the, the film is from the point of view of two ladies two uh, two uh, uh, female heroes and we wanted to stick to that no matter what uh we really really wanted to stick to what they have done and what they have achieved uh and uh, and uh, we didn't want to get influenced by anything outside of that purview like we wanted to stick to that and that's why we didn't meet anyone i would agree with uh, yami when she puts that very interesting line in her tweet where she says uh our small little film with a big heart So Yami there is a someone waiting to happen as well let's let me end this conversation with that <laughs> a little yeah, small think, heart uh, a little <laughs> small heart has been a very big part of this entire journey through and through and uh, been really kind and very supportive to um, the mother <laughs> so that i can only thank our baby and uh, this is this is a blessing this is we take it as 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 a blessing we're very happy uh, again happened at a very crucial point um, in our lives where that balance between uh, embracing an absolutely new chapter and something as beautiful as as motherhood along with such an important the most important film of of my career which is almost again like a family affair but um, i i think in ch- in times like these is when you realize your true true potential and uh, and can if you can allow yourself to feel centered then i think anything is anything is possible with the right support yami aditya dhar and aditya jamle thank you so much for uh, speaking to nd tv for the viewers uh, it's an interesting cinema Uh, which captures all the events perhaps that unfolded at that time do watch whenever you get time thanks so much for watching